from Garage Rehab, Richard Rawlings on the show. It's uh, on every Wednesday at 10 on the Discovery Channel. You're working on a garage in Hamden? Yeah, actually, I'm in Connecticut. There was uh, one of the perks, I'll call it, of doing the show is that people who wouldn't normally be able to pick my brain or whatever can can get in touch with me. So there was uh, two brothers. Um, so you're kind of freelancing. This isn't with the show. The no. show's not in Hamden. You're in Hamden. Yep, I'm actually in Hamden. And I do this on Long Island, too, when there's shops that or businesses in general that you know want to pick my brain. If I'm available, I'm going to do what I can because the way I look at it is I'm blessed to be where I am now. And if I can give back, Elvis Presley said it the best. He said if somebody asked him for the shirt off his back, he'd give it to him because if it wasn't for them, he wouldn't have the shirt. Right. And, and that's truly how I believe. So if I can help anybody out, then that's what I'm going to do. And these guys from New England Motors said, hey, Russ, you know, we're struggling. Our dad passed away, whatever. And so I'm going to come up and I'm going to do what I can to try to help him succeed. You know, Now is there a fee for that? No. I, you know what? Are you I'm, serious? Yeah. I'm wow. not, I'm not going to do that. I don't. If I'm going to get in there and work and get my hands dirty and do what I normally do, well, yeah, that's what I did. You know, I did construction, and if I'm going to do that, that's the same thing. But if it's something that I'm just going to come in and, and try to help them out, well, then I'm going to make sure that I do it, and they're going to benefit from it. So, so you're here just to help these guys. Yep. Wow. On his own dime, yeah. Yeah. You don't hear about that. back and forth, driving back and forth. Yep. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, Very and, often. Awesome. And that's, believe it or not, that's how I was, I won't say raised, but when I... When I moved out to the North Fork of Long Island, I joined uh, an ambulance corps, and, and I wanted to get really involved with helping people, mainly because I was a scumbag dr- growing up. You know, I was doing all <laughs> kinds of stuff. You felt like you needed like, to give back? I felt like I needed to make amends somehow, okay. right? Yeah. So in doing that, I, I became an EMT, and I became an EMTCC, and I was a, one of the top responders, and I really, really delved into that. You and, see people having the worst moment of their life you walk into those scenes right this is tough stuff and and that's something that not a lot of people can do but they want to and and i'm i'm blessed to be able to handle that kind of stuff you know stress and chaos is something i seem to thrive on and um so giving back is something that's in my nature and and if i i tell everybody if i'm going to benefit from what i'm doing now and i can help anybody that's what i'm going to do you know i reach out to some of charities and, and and my as ridiculous as it sounds, my agent and manager know that if Make a Wish or anybody like that would benefit from me having anything to do with them, I'm going to do it because your, I your want to be able to Your inbox is going to be full today. Well, yes. <laughs> and that's fine because that's really, really how I am. I won't. I'm looking at it this way. I have a certain, a finite amount of the celebrity time, if you want to call it that, and I'm going to make sure that. I'm going to have other people on my train with me that are going to be Damn. able to benefit. So. What a nice guy. That's I awesome. Love you. That is awesome. <laughs> How yeah. much of the uh, so we know that Garage Rehab is a real reality show, so you don't really need to stage anything because you're trying to turn a business over in a week, right? How much money? How, what's the deal like? How does the garage? If there's a garage listening now who wants you guys to come out, how do they get in touch with you? Take us through the process. Then, what's the deal? Like Rollins okay. will donate money or invest money. How yes. does that work? So what happens is if you're a struggling garage, and and when I say garage, I mean everything from uh, if you're a railroad, tra- you know, an engineer garage or an airplane hangar, any kind of garage, basically, you're going to go on to discovery.com backslash garage rehab casting, and you're going to fill out a simple, simple application, and it's going to ask where the shop is and, and what kind of work you do and the people that are there. Because obviously, number one, it's a TV show. So they want to make sure you have some sort of character and you're not watching paint dry when we're, when we're in there working. Yeah. The mm-hmm. other part is we want to make sure there's actually you know, a, a real need there and you're not just looking for a handout. Right. And so what will happen is they'll go through, they'll get vetted, they'll make sure that you know, we're not working for felons yeah. and, and, or somebody with five names or whatever. And once that's proven out, then they go and they say, look, Richard, th- these are the garages that need help. And then... Richard and I will sit down, we'll go through them, and we'll say, okay, these are where the area we're going to be in or we would like to be in because obviously it has to make sense financially for everybody involved. So we make sure that it's something that we can do within a couple of of day trips or whatever it is. And we'll go in there, we'll drive around. Richard is very, very smart when it comes to business. So he checks the demographics of the area. He wants to see what kind of uh, income they have and and what's a disposable income, what kind of garage, can it sustain? Can the garage sustain the area sustain the garage? Is there a lot of competition? He's really smart with his homework. Then we'll go and look at it. And and based on what we see building wise, condition wise, how the, the 
the boss is, how the employees are, how the boss treats the employees, everything. We'll make that determination right then and there whether we want to help them. Trip one. Yep. No. And we'll go mm-hmm. in and we'll actually make them the offer. And we've had a couple of garages tell us no. Yeah, the episode I saw <laughs> wow. started. With right. The, the guy, it was the guys with all the quads. Yeah. yeah. And oh, quads yeah. and bikes stacked everywhere. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was a mess. And uh, I don't know why they said no. Did right. they not like how the deal was going to work? So basically, a lot of people, and this happened with Flop Shop, too. Yeah. Um, they come in and, and we position them, we proposition them with the amount of money it's going to take to do the job and how long they have to pay back and all that kind of stuff. And Richard being the boss. So sometimes Richard being the boss is the, is the what kills the deal. You know, they don't want right, to Well, this is to my it. business, and I built it. You can't be the boss. Yeah, that's that, been said a couple of times. Yeah. Show, yeah. yeah, and that's the hardest thing is these guys come in, and I had this issue when, with a shop in L.A. I'm like, you reached out for help, and you're not willing to listen to what the help is. So either it's the, the dollar amount that they're not comfortable with because, and to me, that, that speaks volumes because if I come in and I tell you, look, I'm going to do this for $150, and you go, look, I may not be able to pay that back, well, you don't have the confidence in me, number one, and you don't have the confidence in yourself. Because right. if somebody came to me and go, Russ, I'm going to give you $2 million to do this, and you have this amount of time, great, I'm on it. You know, because, I'll do it, and you'll get your money back. Right. And, and then some, because I have that much confidence. So I actually applaud some of those people that have said no to us, because that takes a, you know, a big set to be able to say that to us. And now I think it's actually going to get harder, now that people have seen what we're doing there, because they're going to want to come in and go, oh, well, I get all that stuff for free. No, you no. don't. You might want to figure out the whole deal before yeah. you agree to this. So this is a real deal. It's real not the deal. show paying for all this. No, nope, this is a I real deal. I saw a lot of plugs. There I, is. And that's fine. Yep. You know, I get it. Because yep. now you could do the de- you could do the, the whole project for less money. It helps right. And it's yes. less of a burden on the owner of the show. Right. Sure. Right. Yeah. So plus, that's great. Plus, it gives us a lot of quality products that want to be involved, obviously, because their name's going to be attached to a national show. I think we're in 137 countries, translated in eight different languages. Jeez. You know, wow. so that's weird. I want to see you in Chinese. Yeah. I actually saw myself speaking Italian the other day, and that was quite <laughs> funny. So it's a lot of weird stuff.